Ray, your defense recorded their first shutout last week against Cincinnati. Do you feel that? The I mean, if you want to put outside in the game, we got Sam and Goose. If you want to put Ward Dillon in the game, we got a Dillon Thomas and Peter Bowen. And then I'm scraping everything up. So, hey, let's play football. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Al. All right, thank you, Eric. Ray Lewis, the last time he was here, of course, it was for the Super Bowl. Martin Gramatica with the pulled hamstring incurred last week on the shelf tonight. Thus, Doug Bryan, who had been out of the NFL this year, then kicked off for Indianapolis, oddly in a Monday night game a couple of weeks ago, and then he was released by them and signed by Tampa. Jermaine Lewis, one of the very best in the league at running back kickoffs and punts, will return the opening kickoff on this very balmy night. Two teams, each trying to, in effect, clinch a pit playoff spot as it's taken at the four. Lewis stumbles, falls down at the 21-yard line, and then is tackled at the 24, and we begin with a flag on the first play as Dick Hantak is the referee tonight. And it will be against Baltimore, so Lewis falls down, and then they'll wind up getting penalized half the distance to the goal line. Let's check in with Melissa. After we hear from Dick Hantock, we'll go down to Melissa. Official call Holding. right here. During the return, number 50, 10 yard penalty, first out. As noted, now to Melissa. Well, Al, even though these two teams have never played each other, the head coaches, Brian Billick and Tony Dungy, have great familiarity. They worked together in Minnesota in the early 90s. Billick, the offensive coordinator, Dungy, the defensive coordinator. So, Year. Both coaches told us that after sitting next to each other for so many years, they each know exactly what the other one is thinking and what his tendencies are, so it should be a classic chess match, Al. A great deal of respect for each other, trying to outsmart each other tonight as Billick's team begins with a Terry Allen two-yard run up to the 16, so it's second down and eight. Elvis Gerback has the ball off to Allen, and he goes nowhere as we meet the Baltimore offense. Elvis Gerback, University of Michigan. Terry Allen, Clemson. Sam Gash, Penn State, Nittany Lion. Kaja Ismail, Syracuse University. Travis Taylor, University of Florida. Shannon Sharp, Savannah State. Jonathan Ogden, UCLA. Edwin Militano, University of Arizona. Mike Flynn, University of Maine. Benny Anderson, Tennessee State University. Kip Vickers, University of Maine. Now Gerback retreats on third down and eight. Over the middle, completes the pass to Mo Williams, who comes in on third down, and they convert a first down up to the 29-yard line. That's one thing that Elvis Gerback must do tonight is be very patient and be willing to take the dump-off pass, as he did that time to Mo Williams. When Williams comes in the game, he adds a lot of speed to this backfield of the Buccaneers. Good pass protection for Gerback and a fine throw and a key pickup first down there for the Ravens on their first third down. 12 yard gain Williams out. Allen back in Jason Brookins their other running back is still hurt hope to have him back next week for the Ravens and Allen juggles the pass as he was in the grasp as the ball was approaching him of Derek Brooks. I'll tell you what an odd year it's been for Baltimore as far as their offensive backfield goes out. They are now considering Terry Allen to be fresh legs. <laughs> He's been in forever. That's because he is coming back from a broken hand, missed some action, and really does have fresh legs. Simeon Rice with the pressure there, Derek Brooks with the hit, and Brian Kelly with a missed opportunity to pick that one off and take it to the house. Second down and 10 now from the 28-yard line. Fair back to the air again, and that's a flat-out drop by Shannon Sharp. Another third down coming up. Here is the Buccaneer D. Marcus Jones, University of North Carolina. Anthony McFarlane, LSU. Warren Sapp, University of Miami Hurricane. Simeon Rice, University of Illinois. Sheldon Quarles, Vanderbilt University. Jamie Duncan, Vanderbilt University. Derek Brooks, Florida State University. Brian Kelly, University of Southern California. Ronnie Barber, University of Virginia. John Lynch, Stanford University. Dexter Jason, Florida State University. And now on third and nine, that is 
and interception. And that's Rondi Barber's 10th of the season. A late Christmas gift after it looked like the Bucks had squandered another good opportunity. A deflected pass deflected back into the hands of Rondi Barber. Three deflected passes now for Gerback in a row. Rondi Barber had three interceptions last week against New Orleans. Derek Brooks, the playmaker in the middle, deflects it to Jamie Duncan, who volleyballs it over to his uh, running mate there, Rondé Barber. And Barber on his way to the Pro Bowl with 10 interceptions. That leads the NFL. Well, much like hockey, they can only give out two assists on one play, and they both were received there. And he now holds the record for a single season with 10 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And that's the first guy to come up with double figures and in interceptions in 11 years since Mark Carrier did it with the Bears in 90. And they begin with Riddell Anthony carrying it on an end around, and he's taken down behind the line of scrimmage by Rob Burnett. And for Elvis Gerback, you're looking at a guy who's going to lead a team into the playoffs if they win tonight, but now with three more interceptions than touchdown passes. And Rondi Barber, whose twin brother Tiki, is involved in tomorrow's big game, the Giants in Philadelphia. You sure that's Rondé and not Tiki? <laughs> you never know. I tell you what, he's got almost as many receptions as his brother. And <laughs> Second and 13, and that pass is thrown behind Carl Williams, and Dwayne Starks is there covering. Here is the Buccaneer offense. Brad Johnson, Florida State University. Warwick Dunn, Florida State. Mike Alstott, Purdue. Keyshawn Johnson, the real USC. Carl Williams, Texas A&M Kingston. Dave Moore from the University of Pittsburgh. Kenyatta Walker, University of Florida. Randall McDaniel, Arizona State. Jeff Christie, Pitt. Cozy Coleman, University of Tennessee. Jerry Wunsch, University of Wisconsin. Third and 14. Keyshawn Johnson saying the real USC, University of Southern California. I think because South Carolina is in town to play on the Outback Bowl. That's thrown over the middle to all stop, and he is stopped at the 35-yard line, so they get the turnover and can't cash in. Jamie Sharper makes the tackle. Line of scrimmage will be the 35-yard line. And that would be pushing uh, Doug Bryan back too far to try a field goal, so the Raven defense comes up with three solid plays there. You have to question the Buccaneers' first offensive play, though, as well as they ran the ball last week against New Orleans to come out with a reverse to Redell Anthony that got nothing. Jermaine Lewis is back to receive the kick. Mark Royals will need to try to angle it or pooch it. And he angles it. And the play is made at the one-yard line by Dwight Smith. And that was quite a play by Smith because he had fallen down. He had slipped on the turf. He got back up and keeps it from going into the end zone to pin the Ravens deep. He gets knocked down, gets back up, wins the battle. Yard line with Gerback retreating to the end zone and then going deep and the pass is incomplete. Great coverage that time on Shannon Sharp going down the sideline. Rondé Barber and John Lynch both covering on the play. Second and ten. One thing about the Bucks is they will bring pressure from their front four. Anthony McFarland, number 92 right here. Actually, the other side here. Watch out as he fights through the double team of Ed Flynn, gets pressure on Gerback but not in time. Second and 12 now. Terry Allen is the eye back. And Allen trying to give them some breathing room. Takes it out to the four where Warren Sapp, big number 99, makes the tackle. Tells you just how important that play by Dwight Smith was. He pinned the Ravens deep in their own end here where Sapp and McFarlane in that front four can control things and let the secondary make plays. So tough to throw against Derek Brooks in the middle. Rondé Barber now and nickel will move to the inside as Donnie Abraham comes in to play the corner on the outside. Three wideouts here. Mo Williams is the sole setback. Gerback fires, and that pass is almost intercepted by Donnie Abraham. So Gerback has thrown one interception and two near interceptions. And he may be hurt. Been under pressure on almost every ball he's thrown tonight. On the outside, here's Abraham and Travis Taylor here. Abraham drops an interception. That's two balls now. The Bucks have dropped. And here's the shot, though, by on the far, far side, coming from the blind side of Elvis Gerback. 
And that's Warren Sapp. Who else? But the big injury is to Marcus Jones because he is down and writhing in the end zone. The Buck defensive end. As you look over at the Raven bench, their backup quarterback is Randall Cunningham, who is 2 0. Oh. But the attention right now is being paid to Marcus Jones as you look at Cunningham, who filled in in midseason and won both starts in relief of Gerbach. Well, Gerbach's upside, as we saw in Kansas City last year, is potentially 4,000 yards, but his downside is something that they had in Trent Dilfer last year. Dilfer would not have thrown that pass, he was a good field manager. He kind of knew that he wasn't capable of 4,000, so he didn't make throws like that. You got to wonder about these interceptions that the Buccaneers have dropped. They didn't get any points out of Barber's 10th interception of the year. And right there, if Donnie Abraham makes that catch, he may put it in the end zone. Now, Kyle Richardson to punt. That was a pretty key two yard pickup to the four yard line because Richardson has had six punts blocked in his career, plus two in a playoff game last year. He takes a while to get the ball away, and he gets this one away. But when he does, it's normally for good distance, and it's fair caught at the 49-yard line by Carl Williams. 45-yard kick. Tampa Bay will take over at the Baltimore 49 as they work on Gerback. Five minutes into the game, nothing, nothing in Tampa. Brian Billick. One time offensive coordinator at Minnesota Tony Dungy one time defensive coordinator at Minnesota Melissa talking about their relationship both have been something special in the month of December Dungy since he took over in 96 12 and 1 at home in the month as Mike Allstott is stopped for no gain and you saw Brian Billick's record 9 and 1 overall Brian now in his third year as the head coach of the Baltimore Ravens. I think that uh, Allstott's going to use that 360 as his move du jour here at the end of the season. Saw him pop a few of those last week against New Orleans. Looks like he's going to throw them off. They expect him just to bulldoze them. <laughs> Mike's throwing him the Pearl Monroe spin move. Warwick Dunn is now in the game. When the season began, it looked like as if they would feature Dunn more than Allstott this year. It's turned out to be the reverse. Here is Dunn. He tries to cut it back, and Warwick Dunn having, without question, his worst year. Kelly Gregg makes the tackle and I don't know whether it's just the injury he's been bothered with a foot injury all year or blocking schemes or whatever but Dunn is having a terrible year. Well, you know what Al the, most of these teams thrive on a change of pace in their offensive backfield you look at the Pittsburgh Steelers between Bettis and Zaraway they have it covered from B to Z but Tampa Bay over the years has always thrived when one or the other back picked up most of the carries be it all start or done either one just make sure one of them gets most of them we saw that one number and that says all you need to know his average rush 2.7 yards per attempt as Johnson gets hit as he throws intended for Dunn and overshoots him Dunn was covered by Ray Lewis so it's fourth down and 14 and again the Bucks started drive in Baltimore territory and could do nothing with it. They've run six plays and they have negative yardage for those six plays. But the emphasis on the running game is more north and south now with Mike Allstott in the game. They want to use work done just as they did there as a third down receiver out of the backfield. But Ray Lewis had tight coverage for that high throw. Now Mark Royals whose last punt pinned Baltimore at the two yard line floats one toward Lewis but angles it out of bounds off the side of his foot and this time Baltimore will begin the drive at its own as they keep marching it off 27 make it 28 yard line and Gerback appears ready to come back into the game and here he comes with eight and a half minutes to play in the opening period. So Elvis back at the helm after a 25 yard punt by Mark Royal game at 8:30 Eastern time Redskins and Saints what's the story with Elvis Gerback let's go to Melissa well official word from the Ravens he has bruised ribs remember he missed two games earlier this year with injured ribs so something to keep an eye on as for the Buccaneers Marcus Jones he has a sprained right shoulder his return is questionable and that's why Steve White number 94 is in the game in place of Jones after Terry Allen picks up a couple and you look at Jones you see that yards per attempt stat there on Elvis Al. I'll tell you what Dilfer's was even a little more incrementally better last year so it's uh, like I said if they're not going to get the big numbers out of Elvis they're going to at least expect him to manage the game 
So the defense can have that hero mentality like they did last year with Elvis. Well, Gerback was uh, Ger Gerback was very candid earlier this week. He rated his year as subpar. Doesn't mince words. Terry Allen Gerbach's makes the catch and is taken out of bounds by Derek Brooks. And the reason it's been subpar is he's used to making plays down the field. When he's with Kansas City, Dennis talked about those 4,000 yards. But this is a different style of offense. This is one that uh, Trent Dilfer did a great job for them last year. But it's a very—you got to be patient. You got to throw the check downs, hit the tight end, and occasionally go deep. But getting Travis Taylor is important for Gerback to get him involved. One big advantage that Dilfer had that Gerback doesn't have is the presence of Jamal Lewis, the running back, and that pass comes close to getting intercepted by Rondé Barber intended for Condre Ismail perfect coverage and ironically Gerback has come over here from Kansas City and I know it wasn't a trade but Priest Holmes now resides in Kansas City he's up around eighteen hundred and fifty total yards so you have to wonder who has accrued better from the other team in the offseason little irony here because as Kyle Richardson gets ready to punt everybody thought the conventional wisdom was that Brad Johnson would wind up with Baltimore but he chose Tampa meanwhile a bad kick it rolls out of bounds at the 38 yard line. And you wonder how the pressure that uh, Richardson faced last time he punted affected that punt. He begins and fits and starts. A reminder New Year's Day that's Tuesday it begins with the Tournament of Roses Parade 11 a.m. Eastern and then to football the Citrus Bowl is Michigan against Tennessee the Fiesta Bowl is Oregon Colorado then Illinois LSU on Tuesday night. Maryland Florida Wednesday night and then Thursday night the third the Rose Bowl the national championship game from Pasadena Miami against Nebraska Tampa Bay's third possession minus five total yardage on their first two possessions and from the 39 Brad Johnson throws and that is caught Keyshawn Johnson almost drops it but was able to secure it gets tackled by McAllister the other night Michael Jordan scored six points for the Wizards in their game against Indiana tonight in Washington look at that Jordan scored 51 points as the Wizards beat the Hornets 107 to 90 unreal well and you know unreal quit meaning anything to me vis-a-vis -vis that guy a few years ago it's like ever since I saw him come out of that sick bed in Utah anything goes unreal at the age of 30 Eight scoring 51 as Johnson on second and one jams it into Keyshawn Johnson. Johnson to Johnson for a first down at the 43 yard line. That's the one thing about Keyshawn Johnson at 6'4, 215 pounds. He has the power and size to get inside even a big corner like Chris McAllister. And the confidence from his quarterback that he's going to make the catch in traffic. 104 catches in traffic for Keyshawn this year. Next one will break Maury Wills' record. <laughs> First and 10 at the 44 yard line. Against the four man Baltimore front, and they give it to Warwick Dunn. He has a little bit of room to roll. The umpire goes down in the pile as well. And let's take a look at the Baltimore defense. Rob Burnett, Syracuse University. Sam Adams, Texas A&M University. Tony Saragusa, Pitt. Adelis Thomas, Southern Miss. Peter Bulware, Florida State University. Ray Lewis, University of Miami. Jamie Sharper, University. Of Virginia! Dwayne Starks, University of Miami. Chris McAllister, University of Arizona. Corey Harris, Vanderbilt University. Rod Woodson, Purdue University. Second down and six, Mike Allstott carrying the ball. So we saw it done, and now Allstott close to a first down. Two guys coming out of the Tampa backfield. Eric, who's going to be the more effective tonight? What do you think? Well, Al, I really believe they should feature Warwick Dunn against this Ravens defense because of his quickness. They should run quick traps and draws. Plays that take a long time to develop won't work because of the quickness of this defense. I really don't think they should feature Mike Allstott. He's not quick. He's a power back, and he's not really able to make people miss. He's a straight line runner, and that is what this Ravens defense like, straight line runners. So we'll see what Dunn does tonight in a year, as we say, that his average per carry is only 2-7. Dunn set it up, and then Allstott picks up the first down. But in talking to Allstott yesterday, he says he's healthy as he's been all year, and I guess that anybody that just saw the game last week against New Orleans, when he went for 101 yards against that defense, 
broke many tackles showed a lot of power and the Buccaneers feel that on the right side with Jerry Wunsch where they hit that time with Allstott they have a size advantage and the power just may work on the outside and Dungey can play mix and match they're both in the game here Allstott the fullback Dunn is the tailback and Johnson to throw Dunn's it over the middle and it's almost picked off by Lewis who had two last week against Cincinnati well, that was the amazing thing about Lewis in the Super Bowl last year the way he drops into these patterns hey eh, Dano well he's got great speed he's got great depth and he's got awareness he has to fight behind the umpire there Carl Madsen maybe just maybe Brad Johnson didn't see him hiding behind the umpire but it seems like the guys get hot on defense too we've seen Rondé Barber with interception tonight almost got another one now Ray Lewis has the nose for the ball second and ten they flank all stop out to the left line him up as a wide out give the ball to Dunn and Warwick can go nowhere minimal gain if any Ray Lewis is there so Lewis drops into coverage and then makes the tackle of the line of scrimmage on the next play well the locals are restless now they're restless because uh, this man is the quickest linebacker in football real speed here recognizing dodging the block of Randall McDaniel making the tackle on Warwick Dunn Sarah Goosa took on two men it looked like he was wearing them like water wings Tony was questionable tonight he even suit up after being featured in the teens third down and nine is Johnson sets throws and jams it into the tight end that's Dave Moore but he's a little short of the first down needed nine and got about eight and a half Carnell Lake the longtime Steeler makes the tackle and Dungy taking a look trying to line it up to see if he got the first down or at least how close they are yeah it's decision time then for Dungy it appears they are about six seven inches short what a catch by Dave Moore so now without Gramatica you're looking at Doug Bryan if you want to try the field goal from about forty two yards or do you give the ball to Allstott behind Jamil Cook and run the power at the Ravens. Well you know opposition teams are only 15 out of 33 for field goals this year against Baltimore Al, which is an amazing stat it's almost like they get fast guys coming off the corner Woodson McAllister they could press up the middle with their bulk and then this Adelius kid can jump like an NBA guy they've got all the components to get into the kickers heads well the crowd is booing you know it's going to be a very low scoring game points or at a premium and I'm sure that's factored into Dungy's equation here and another against another opponent he might go for it but here's Brian with Royals to hold from 42 yards and the kick is good so I think if Dungy thought it would be a high scoring game a shootout if he matched up against some other opponent he might have gone for it but in a game like this that could very well be the difference at the end we nothing Right now, Verizon Wireless is giving you time for you and your family, wherever you are. It's time for the family share plan, only from Verizon Wireless. I'd like to wish our military troops a happy new year. Thank you for serving our country and protecting our freedom. Echoing our sentiments says the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Lynch's Bucks take a 3-0 lead. John Lynch three times to Honolulu. Wouldn't be surprised to see him there again on February the, what is it, the uh, 8th or 9th? February 9th this year. 9th this year. The Saturday. Kickoff fielded at the six yard line by Jermaine Lewis. And Lewis comes back out to the 31. Let's go to the field and Melissa Starr. Well, Al, as we talked about the last time the Buccaneers played on Monday night, John Lynch has practiced the same ritual before every game of his nine-year NFL career. Right before he runs out of the locker room onto the field, he reads an inspirational note from his wife, Linda. She writes a different note every week. And given the importance of this game, I asked her what she said to John in tonight's note. She said, this is such a great opportunity for you and the team to prove yourselves against the defending Super Bowl champion. She highlighted how much she believes in him. She said, have fun, but most important, do not forget about the details. I just want to know if it was laced with Chanel number five. <laughs> well, I know that's Johnny's first impulse on the field is to have fun. <laughs> you know, in his own way. <laughs> yeah, his idea of fun is knocking somebody out. 
Those are the details that uh, Melissa was referring to. Allen just picked up two. Terry Allen's fifth carry. He's netted nine yards to this point, and now on second down and eight, Gerback hangs in the pocket, throws underneath. That's caught by Shannon Sharp, and he's close to a first down. So spotted up at uh, the 41 yard line. Well, you knew this was a big game when he uh, was quiet this week. Uh, we couldn't see many quotes. He was almost uh, effusive in his praise of Ray Lewis. Or of, uh, Warren Sapp. Well, Warren, he knows that Warren is such a great buddy of. Lewis because yeah. he played at Miami. I think of the two as the same. It's right. almost like Warren is a bigger version of Ray. He might they the both first. play the same way. First and ten after Sharp does pick up the first down. Buck show blitz. Here they come. And getting a free shot but still getting it away is Todd Heap to make the catch at the 41 yard line and coming in off the corner with a free shot was Steve White. The gain is for 17 in a first down. Todd Heap is going to be a big part of the game plan tonight for the Ravens because of this ability to get down the field catch the ball in traffic both uh, he and Shannon Sharper in the game at the same time and Steve Smith Steve White rather easing up on Elvis Gerr back there keep their number one draft choice from Arizona State ball at the 42 yard line as Gerr back slings it and that's a great grab off his shoe tops by Shannon Sharp to the 32 yard line covered there by Donnie Abraham and that's close to a first down that's part of the patience that Elvis must show tonight smiling and laughing because he appreciates just how great that catch is catching the back half of the ball as right now Gerback getting hot throwing three straight passes three straight completions to his tight ends Shannon went down and scooped it like Clint Clendenin Bino. Don Clendenin the stretch man at first double in had that big conch shell for a glove <laughs> and they are inch is or maybe singular of a first down a minute 11 to go and a reminder the NHL begins next Saturday here on ABC Avalanche and the Red Wings Rangers and Penguins great matchup Capitals and Bruin in fact the Bruins are in town tonight to face the Tampa Bay Lightning that's three Eastern time and the NHL All-Star game will come your way the day of the Super Bowl in fact uh, that Saturday from Los Angeles this year on ABC second down and inches at the 32 yard line Gerback chased and then he just throws it away Steve White came off the other corner but that play Simeon Rice almost loosed up and Simeon's been coming on lately he's got 10 sacks for the year now Al. in fact because they get so much publicity that goes Saps way and people talking about Warren and Simeon Rice who sometimes gets lost in the shuffle Okay, got a couple of sacks last week against New Orleans and a very mobile quarterback in Aaron Brooks they back more of a sitting target back there in the pocket third and inches and they get away with it as Terry Allen carries for a first down. Shannon Sharp was in motion and ran into Gerback as you saw and they got away with it. You know I think they got away with it because Terry Allen is such a veteran. He realized that the timing was off there because of Sharp bumping into his quarterback but that didn't distract him or take away from his focus. He knew what he had to do. He had to get a couple of inches. He got a couple of yards. Terry Allen 33 years old running on two reconstructed knees. Allen breaks it and takes it to the 13 and Billick knew all about Allen of course when he was at Minnesota then he went to Washington to Terry a 16 yard gain. He was out of the NFL when Jamal Lewis got hurt. Brian knew his home phone number obviously called him and he came and he's been well, he's they might be reconstructed, it. Al, but the guy who did Lee Major's knees must have did us there <laughs> because he looked pretty good. And that's the way the quarter ends with the Ravens driving. And our Saturday night special returns after this for our ABC stations. The NFL regular season wraps up next Monday. The Super Bowl champion Ravens are primed for a play. Quarter begins with Tampa leading 3-0 and Mo Williams 
taking the ball for a gain of about seven behind an Ian Badejo block. But there is a flag that will negate that game. That look says it all. That was a critical mistake as the Ravens have been rolling on this drive. Four first downs so far. Two passing and two running. But you can see the difference when Mo Williams comes in the game. He's got the speed to get the corner. Holding. Holding. Offense. Offense. Number 64. Number 64. The end of the run end of the was run. beyond the line of scrimmage. The holding was beyond the line of scrimmage. We'll penalize from the spot of the foul. Ten yards. Repeat the down. First down. Here's Edwin Mulatalo. He's going to be blocking on Derek Brooks, number 55, right here. Watch that right hand go out there and spin Brooks around just enough and take him down. From the spot of the foul back, it goes to the 21. That's an eight, eight yards behind the original line of scrimmage. So it's first and 18 from the 21. And on a delay, Terry Allen takes the ball to the 14. Numbers to the first quarter about to appear. I wouldn't lie to you now, would I? Well, we've had two punts each. That ought to tell you that uh, the offensive numbers aren't too good. Although the Ravens on this drive, as I talked about, are starting to get their rhythm, especially Elvis Gerback. Three for three on the drive. And Terry Allen does look fresh. Meanwhile, Tampa has taken the lead. It's the 16th straight home game in which they've scored first. Now, Gerback to the end zone. Touchdown by Travis Taylor. One official signal touchdown. The others were looking to see if it could be confirmed. And the Bucks are arguing. And I'm sure if uh, Dungy has any question about this, we'll have a challenge. He goes up. He makes the grab. Nice play. The Buccaneers and their fans are looking for a flag because that left arm by Travis Taylor pushed off on Donnie Abram. He got away with it and got the score. And now Matt Stover for the extra point. Twitch, twitch. And so they go 69 yards after they've been stymied on their first three possessions. Good play by Taylor. And Baltimore takes the lead, 7-3. Tampa Bay Buccaneers have been in the NFL since 1976. So in 26 years, they've played 403 games. They've returned more than 1,500 kickoffs. No touchdowns. That woman is Melinda Rosser from Temple Terrace nearby. And she wins a million dollars if the Bucs return a kickoff for a touchdown as part of a promotion. Aaron Stecker last week returned one a club record 86 yards. And Melinda will see if this one can be run back by Stecker from 103. But no, he gets tripped up at the 33-yard line. Wayne Starks makes the tackle. And let's check in with Melissa. Well, Al Warwick Dunn has certainly been in the Christmas spirit lately. Last week, he continued his annual program called Homes for the Holidays. Dunn helps disadvantaged single mothers in his hometown of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and here in Tampa become first-time homeowners. He makes the down payment on a new house, furnishes it, and stocks it with food. In the last five years, he has helped 28 families. The reason he does it, to make his mom, Betty, proud. I'll tell you more after this play. All right, as Johnson on first down throws. And that is caught spinning around is Keyshawn Johnson for a gain of eight. And Melissa, as Paul Harvey would say, the rest of the story. Well, Dunn's mother, Betty, a single parent and police officer, was shot and killed during an attempted robbery at a convenience store while she was working one of her many off-duty jobs to support her six children. Warwick was 17 years old at the time. He said, my mom definitely could have benefited from a program like Homes for the Holidays. And while these women will never replace her, I live through them and my dreams come mm. through them. Very special man, Warwick Dunn, who's out of the game at the moment is Mike Allstown on second and short. Takes the ball up to the 43-yard line for a first down. And that little man living his life like a big man there. Yeah. Huh? How solid is that? Florida State alum. And as we said at the beginning of the year, new offensive coordinator Clyde Christensen 
really wanted to feature Warwick Dunn. Give him room to roam, and there's Clyde uh, working from the sideline, and it is Clyde himself who pulls the plays into Johnson's helmet. First down as Johnson throws, and that one is batted and knocked down incomplete. But as it tur has turned out, it's been partially because of Dunn's uh, bad foot. Mike Allstott has done the bulk of the ball carrying. You know what? Other than the running backs, I'll tell you what move I love by Dungey is the insertion of Carl the Truth Williams into the starting lineup over Jack Pez Green. I think it signals from Dungey, who's often accused of being a staid coach, I mean a great coach, but a bit on the conservative side, that he's willing to make changes this late in the season. Tells his team he thinks the game is afoot. Tony's malleable. He just needs the, the right personnel. And Last week, everything meshed for them. It was their best performance of the year in their round of New Orleans. It was all stop. Up to the 47th game of four. It'll be third down and six. Malleable. You're beautiful, man. Malcolm Glazer looked over. He thought we were talking about him when he said Mal. <laughs> I don't see anybody in uh, Modell's booth tonight. Art is not here. In fact, Art is uh, back in the Baltimore area. Is this too close to Cleveland? I don't think so. <laughs> I think it's a little too late. I think Pat, Pat wanted Art to uh, just relax at home, so Ozzy Newsom uh, and uh, the gang come down to uh, Tampa. Well, I'm sure we'll see Art next week because we're in Baltimore for the Monday night game. Johnson throws, and that one's nearly picked off. Right into the hands of Adelius Thomas. He said, what do I have here? Six. Adelius Thomas has blocked nine passes so far this year. At 6 2, he's filling in on that defensive line for Mike McCrary. But this is a mistake by Brad Johnson. They're trying to find his tight end, Dave Moore, over the middle. Lucky that Thomas didn't pick it off. Mark Royals. 12th year in the league with the Appalachian State. Jermaine Lewis from the 15 yard line. Gets a block. But then gets taken down with coverage by the Bucks up at the 20-yard line. So 11.30 to go in the opening half with the world champions leading 7-3. I first saw Monty come up there. I thought it was Tiki. I'm just drinking coffee next year. No <laughs> water. Monty must have had a battle with kidney stones. <laughs> First down from the 20 yard line. And keeping his legs churning was Terry Allen after he was Terry stopped Allen in the backfield and turns a small loss into a four yard pickup. You know, Dennis, you talked about uh, Terry being fresh and having those fresh legs. He had a broken hand, but that didn't keep him from uh, keeping in great shape. So when he did come back, he was fresher than uh, the other backs in the backfield, and he appears to be very strong as well. Second and seven, a little toss back to Allen, and he gets a couple up to the 26 yard line. Oh. Terry Allen, 108 rushing yards against the Titans earlier this season, oldest guy in the league to hit three figures. He's got 10 carries tonight, and uh, Matt Cavanaugh told me that he wants to get him about 22. We'll see. Mo Williams in there at times as we've already seen him and we'll also see Ian Badejo spelling the two of them. He has 41 yards on those 10 carries. And Gerbeck under pressure, under pressure from Rice and from Sapp. And hurt again. Yeah, that sack by that Sapp and Simeon Rice is going to go right around Jonathan Ogden. Here is Rice. What a get off. The play action fake did not fake anybody. Not sure why the Ravens were trying to fake the draw here at third and five. Sap coming free as well. That was a 14 yard sack. Flag is thrown as the punt. And another flag at the 48 yard line because Carl Williams called for a fair catch and he was interfered with. So two separate penalties. One thrown as Richardson got the ball away and the other for interfering with a fair catch. Now the Buccaneers should get great field position but they've had great field position all night. 
and they only have three points to show for it. Well, you've got a hold and fair catch interference. So both calls are against the Ravens. And they'll take possession and they'll take the interference call on the attempt to make the fair catch by Carl Williams. There are multiple fouls on the offensive team. Holding offense number 59. That penalty is declined. We have interference, or fair catch interference against the kicking team. It'll be 15 yards, first down. And that's going to set them up at about the 37 yard line. If I was the Tampa Bay Brain Trust, I'd give this one to Brad Johnson. Go ahead, you make the call. Go deep. Working on Gerback again, 7 3 Baltimore. Top on ABC. You know, Leary's a mensch with that fireman's charity of his, Al. Yeah. He gets the money out directly. You got to admire that kid. First out of the 36 yard line, Tampa. Going deep, Johnson going for it all, but into good, good coverage intended for Keyshawn Johnson, covered by Dwayne Starks. Wither Elvis Gerback. Melissa, what's the story? Well, clearly he is getting beat up tonight. In addition to the bruised ribs that he suffered earlier in the game, now he has a strained right groin. They've been working on him, and his return is questionable. And again, Randall Cunningham is the backup quarterback. So Gerback with one touchdown, one pick tonight. Trying to walk it off, and there's Randall at the ready. Second down and 10 now from the 36 yard line. So after the Bucks take a shot with Johnson for six, they go back to the ground. Done. Good hard running to the 30. I mentioned that points are at a premium tonight. All you need to know is that the over under is 34. What does that mean? I'm such a rascal. <laughs> yeah, I'm a babe in the woods. What does that mean? That means that. People, some <laughs> some people think that 34 total points will be scored tonight, which is a very low number. All right. Some people. Now it's third and four. Speaking of 34, <laughs> just to finish the story, at the 30-yard line, Johnson throws, and that is caught by Warwick Dunn for a first down at the 24. Dwayne Starks and Ray Lewis make the tackle. It's just what Eric Dickerson was talking about the. Effectiveness of Warwick Dunn on the draw play on the previous play where he kept his feet driving and picked up six yards to this option route against Ray Lewis and the zone coverage of the Ravens. One thing about Dunn, he's so tough. You know, he's going to get hit here by Ray Lewis on one side and Dwayne Starks on the other. They love to go to him on third down. He leads the club at 26 third down. Receptions for first downs, and that is caught. That's an all start to the 20 yard line for a gain of three. You know what's beautiful about Ray Lewis is he doesn't need much of a glide path to really crack you hard. I mean, the guy sets up and powers through his tackles. It seems like if he's only one step away. And a lot of times, these big type of middle linebackers don't like to be operating in space. But when you have the speed and the knowledge and the anticipation of Ray Lewis, that space. Is shut down in a hurry. Second and seven. Johnson buys time, throws, and that's incomplete. Reaching and stretching for it was the backup tight end Todd Yoder, covered by Anthony Mitchell. Boy, when you throw the ball to your backup tight end, he's only caught two balls all year. You got to put it right on his body. Anthony Mitchell had tight coverage that time on Todd Yoder, number 80 here, but the ball is thrown too high. Yoder hesitated just enough to where this ball is going to be out of his reach. You can see that he just hasn't had enough repetitions as a pass receiver. Third down and seven at the 20 yard line. Johnson surveying hit as he throws and then throws it out of the back of the end zone. Keyshawn Johnson the intended receiver and uh, he and Rod Woodson exchanged greetings. But a great effort by Keyshawn knowing he's running out of real estate at the back of the end zone. 
tried to keep his toes down and stretch out and catch the ball. He catches the ball all right. What an effort. I think he wants to get in that end zone badly or what? That would have been a touchdown in Canada. <laughs> would have been a touchdown if Butch Johnson was in the Super Bowl. <laughs> 38 yard attempt now for the newly signed Doug Bryan replacing the injured Dramatica and Bryan's kick is just good just inside the left upright so Bryan is two for two we have a one point game 738 left in the half Baltimore seven Tampa Bay six. New Year's Day Tuesday the Tournament of Roses Parade the Citrus Bowl Michigan Tennessee Oregon Colorado at 430 Eastern the Fiesta Bowl that night Illinois LSU so a parade in three games and then Wednesday you've got Maryland against Florida that's in the Orange Bowl and then the Rose Bowl brought to you by AT&T features Miami against Nebraska for the national championship at the base of the San Gabriel's with Keith Jackson on hand Tim Brandt will be there. Doug Bryan to kick off for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Seven six Baltimore kickoff fielded by Jermaine Lewis at the nine yard line looking to cut up the middle and Lewis with a good run back all the way back out to the thirty nine yard line and Elvis Gerback despite being shaken up twice back in the game. Yeah he's got a bruised ribs and a strained groin because of some of those hits. Rough start for Elvis as he's six for 13. Donnie Abraham will get this interception in the first quarter. Rather than Rondé Barber. Here's Donnie Abraham dropping one. And then Elvis comes back with his 14 yard touchdown pass to Travis Taylor. And now here's the hit that strained his groin. See how long he can stay in there. From the 38 yard line on first down, Burback nearly tripped over his own lineman's foot. And that one is picked off by Donnie Abraham. At the 47 yard line. Now you called it exactly right. He tripped, pulling away from center. That threw the timing off, and Donnie Abraham stepped in front of the receiver to pick it off. But he looked terrible going back to pass. Here's the route on the outside to Cadre Ismail. Watch Abraham read the quarterback, break on the ball. Now, did he catch it though? The Ravens are saying that it hit the ground. This angle may tell us a little bit more. Whoa. Oh, that looks like an incomplete pass. And he really hides it well with his shoulder there, rolls over and pretends that he made the interception. I got to believe that ball hit the ground, though. Baltimore will challenge it. Do we actually see the ball hit the ground is the question. I think you do there. Both his elbows are apart there. And that's where the ball goes. It goes from his hands right up his arms through his elbows and then down to the ground. Donnie tried to sell it. He got right up through the number one up like he was celebrating. But yeah, he knows something about interceptions 30 in his career but not 31. I don't believe Billick could not have had a better look at it. He was standing right there as Dick Hantak goes to the headset. It's like Dick Antak's getting help over there from the Buccaneer mascot. <laughs> they both had the same look on their face, didn't they? <laughs> Separated at birth. <laughs> Billick has only challenged four plays this season, and he's won two of those challenges. It's certainly not a clean catch, and the ball bounces on the ground right there. You got to wonder about that strained groin of Elvis and how it affected him as he pulled away from center and then threw late to the outside to Cadre Ismail. If I'm Billick, I'm not liking the fact that the Tampa Bay mascot is under the hood over there looking at the replay. You, you this, know, I, all right, can take a look at this part of the play here first. Looks like he got his left, his right foot stepped on. But it's his right groin that is hurting him. That means he was a little bit sore trying to just drop back. You know, this is a technical point, but on that replay, you you, you don't actually see the ball hit the ground. It, it has every characteristic of a ball that bounced off the ground. And let's see what Hantak decides here. 
After reviewing the play, the ball bounced off of the ground prior to the ball being possessed. We're going back to the previous spot, second down and 10 on the 38-yard line. Baltimore is not charged a timeout. Conclusive enough now, for hand tag, even though the ball sort of gets hidden behind his thigh. But you can tell by the way the ball reacts here. Right. Guilty and by you, circumstantial right. evidence. And you look where his leg is on the ground, and the ball hits the ground right there. Yeah. That's a good call by Dick Hantak. And so it's second down and 10 now at the 38, and Billick is three for five in his challenges this season. Bigger question is, how is Elvis? Mo Williams in the backfield, along with Ian Badejo. And they give it to Mo. Minimal gain up to the 39 yard line. Again, the circumstances tonight, if the Bucks win, they all but technically clinch a playoff berth. I mean, a million things would have to happen that would be so wacky as to be ridiculous for them not to make it. So, in effect, they're in. Baltimore is officially in if they win. Third down and 10 now from the 38 yard line. And that's caught over the middle by Allen, who fights his way up to the 44, but well shy of the first down. He's tackled by Shelton Quarles. Both teams are willing to play a field position game now. Both defenses are. Very strong tonight. Elvis with a dump off there with no chance of picking up the first down. But perhaps a good punt by Richardson will give the Ravens and pin the Bucks deep in their own end. Kyle Richardson, his fourth punt of the night. Oh! And it gets blocked. Todd Yoder. And that's the seventh block of Richardson's career. And again, Tampa Bay with great field position. Their special teams coach, Joe Marciano. And Brian Billick has seen that once too often. Todd Yoder almost blocked a punt when he took Joe Maesi all the way back to the punter on the very first punt of the game. Here he is lined up right here. He gives a swim move on Maesi and just comes in clean on Richardson, takes it right off his foot. Great play by Yoder right up the middle. Maesi doesn't have a chance. It was just like him stretching out for that Brad Johnson pass down near the end zone. Didn't quite catch it, but he got his hands on it solid. So the upside to Richardson is he's a, he's a great punter, but the downside is right there. He has a punt block. There'll be 54 punts, which is more than four times as much as every other active punter. First and 10 at the 23-yard line. And Johnson throws it underneath to the tight end. That is more, and he gets hog tied by Ray Lewis. And Lewis is shaken. Now, in fairness to Richardson, I think that uh, the center, Joe Maese, the rookie from New Mexico, was responsible for that last block. Rarely do you see Ray Lewis injured. He's not coming out of the game, but he really put a tackle on Dave Moore out there. Looks like he was flexing his arm as he was coming back to the huddle. Stays in. First and 10 now at the 12. All stock goes to the middle. And he gets bunched up, but is able to chug forward to gain three to the nine yard line. This is where the Buccaneers like to run the ball. That's why they don't have many touchdown passes. Brad Johnson with just 13 on the year. Keyshawn Johnson, everybody knows, just one on the year. In fact, Dave Moore is the leading receiver as far as touchdown receptions is concerned. He's got four. See how much the Bucks pass in the red zone. Clyde Christensen calling in the play. Contrary to what they've been doing for years. Second down and seven. Now the ball is at the nine-yard line. Under five to play in the half. Ravens up by one. Draw. Done. Warwick to the six-yard line, setting up a third and four. You know, when Ray Lewis comes back to the defensive huddle, flexing his arm like that, Al, he might as well be pumping up the defensive players. They so feed off his warrior mentality. You got 10 other guys who are lit on fire just by that simple gesture. 
Third and four last year, Brad Johnson, the Washington Redskin. Very tough in the red zone this year. Another story, only 43%, and he's been dumped five times. Third and four at the six. He throws, and that's deflected. He tried to get it to all stop, deflected at the line of scrimmage. Like Rob, or Rob uh, Burnett, or Peter Bulwer, rather, with the deflection that time. Or was it Tony Saragusa getting up in the air? Or did he get up in the air at all? Saragusa is number 98. There he is right there. Right hand is enough as Brad Johnson rushed that throw to Mike Alstott. 35. So now a 24 yard attempt for the just signed that Doug Bryan used to kick with the 49ers. Most recently with Indianapolis a couple of weeks ago, and that one is right down Broadway. So they cash in after the block punt, but only for three. Dramatic is saluting his at least temporary substitute as Tampa Bay takes the lead again. Nine to seven. Ever since the Bucks came into the league, I think there's a whole generation of kids that have grown up thinking the name of this city is Tampa Bay. It is not. It is Tampa Bay. It is the Tampa Bay area. Count me as one of those kids and explain further, Ricky. <laughs> Tampa Bay Bucks, founded in the 1976 expansion franchise. The great John McKay recently passed away was the uh, the first Bucks coach after a stellar career at the University of Southern California. We got a chance for any Bay Effect snow tonight, Al? I don't think so. 82 inches up in Buffalo. See that? Yeah. yeah. Greg Williams sitting there in the backyard. <laughs> at least they got out of town to get down to New York or at least New Jersey to meet the Jets tomorrow. Brian to kick off. Lewis fields the ball at the nine yard line. And Jermaine Lewis gets run out of bounds by Yoder. So Yoder is all over the joint on special teams, blocking a kick, knocking him out of bounds. Yeah, Good we, run back. We start talking about Sapp and Ray Lewis. <laughs> it has been the Todd Yoder show tonight. Here he is on the very first punt of the game, number 80, pushing Maisi all the way back into Kyle Richardson. Now watch Maisi tackle Yoder as he gets by, but I think Yoder thinks he's got something going here. Watch the swim move and the acceleration to take the ball off of Richardson's foot. Right now it's Todd Yoder three, Joe Maisi nothing. Ravens after the Lewis run back at the 46-yard line, and then Gerback has to sling it out of bounds. Todd yeah. Yoder, second year out of Vanderbilt. He's one of four Tampa Bay Bucks who went to school at Vanderbilt. Smart players. <laughs> you don't think of Vanderbilt as a as a football, I don't want to say power, but not a lot of guys. In fact, I think there are only 10 guys in the league from Vandy. Four of them play here. And if he only would have caught that pass earlier in the second quarter. Second and 10, the ball at the 46-yard line. Back under pressure, under throws his intended receiver, Taylor. It looks like Elvis is having trouble just uh, stepping forward and throwing the ball. That ball came up woefully short to the receiver on the outside, Travis Taylor. This doesn't look like he can bend his knees and really step into the ball because of that strained groin. Third down, 10 at the 46. Gerbach. Intercepted, threw it right into the hands of Derek Brooks. And Brooks is inside the 20, inside the 10. And Brooks is out of bounds at the 1. And the numbers were 5-5. Five, five. Right in the middle of the field is Derek Brooks. Gerback just doesn't look good right now. Watch Brooks leg it out here. Almost 
wondering if this is worth a challenge. Probably not. But I'm sure that Derek would like to think he got in the end zone. Got all the way down to the six-yard line. Three picks on the year now for Brooks as he shows his all-pro form. Gee, I wonder if Allstott might see the ball up here. Did he step out? Tampa Bay may challenge this ruling. You know, Where the, is the ball is the question. Yeah, good call out. The ball was never anywhere near to crossing the plane. Wouldn't be worth taking a challenge right here. You got Allstott. You can behind Jamil Cook. Right, you can dive across the goal line, wind up out of bounds, and it would be a touchdown, but not in this instance. First and goal inside the one. All stop the tailback. He gets the ball and gets taken down at the three-yard line. Taken down by Bullwear. But Bullwear coming off the corner. The former Florida State defensive end, but was he offside? Flag thrown. Were the Ravens offside? Okay. Defense. They were. Number 58 was lined up in the neutral zone at the time of the snap. We will penalize half the distance to the goal line. Replay the down. You know, First it's down. worth a shot. Trying to uh, beat the snap count of Brad Johnson. Bullware, far side here. It looks like he's lined up already. His right hand is in the neutral zone. That's what Hantak said, lined up in the neutral zone. First and goal. And this time it's Johnson trying to go over the top and does. Touchdown. Talk about paying for a touchdown. Pat Johnson just paid big time as Ray Lewis kissed him in midair. Hit him so hard, Johnson was thinking maybe I should have went to Baltimore. Just enough at 6-5 to get in the end zone before Big 52 could smash him. So the Brooks interception paid off on the touchdown by Johnson. Bryan taps on the extra point. And with 3.05 remaining in the half, 16-7. Malcolm Blazer, the owner of the Tampa Bay Bucks, watching his team up by nine. Isn't that the guy who hosts inside the actor's studio? <laughs> James Lipton? Is that Malcolm Blazer? Kind of an interviewer is Lipton. <laughs> so a little dancing on the aisles. Mentioned before, the Bucks all but technically clinched. If they win tonight, they'd have to lose to the Eagles next week. And... The Falcons would have to win at Miami tomorrow and then beat the Rams next week in St. Louis. And Saints don't win two games. And then the Giants don't win two. <laughs> and then, check this out. The combined margins of what would be the Bucks loss to the Eagles next week and the Falcons win over the Rams equals or exceeds 80 points. Do you like uh, that bet, Dennis? That's like what I had to go through to get this job. <laughs> There were a few more ants. <laughs> <laughs> so even though they're not officially in if they went tonight. Looks pretty good. I'll buy you a beer if they don't get in. Here's Brian to kick off. But I won't buy it after the third quarter. Here's Jermaine Lewis. To the 17-yard line. Brings it back up to the 30. I wonder if Doug Bryan's getting tired. He's had a couple of field goals, an extra point or two, and a very short last couple of kickoffs. Go back and take a look at Brad Johnson's third rushing touchdown of the year, and the most painful one. He was barely off the ground when Lewis just hits him. And that's illegal helmet to helmet hit because Brad Johnson is a ball carrier in that case. Well, you know, you miss Martin Gramatica. We tease him in a lot of ways, but he does have 10 touchbacks this year on kicks. So the little guy's got the big, the big game. First and 10 now for the Ravens, who begin with a little toss to Allen. And Nate Webster leads the charge to the ball carrier that time. Back up middle linebacker, second year guy out of Miami. You know, Brian Billick may have a decision to make at halftime based upon how Elvis Gerback is feeling. 
and maybe wanting to spark his team in the second half by putting Randall Cunningham in the game. Second and 14 from the 27 yard line. Burback throws underneath and is caught by Sam Gash, the fullback. And the big burly one takes it out to the 40 yard line, a little short of the first down as the clock ticks down to the two minute warning. So Warren Sapp will get a breather here at the two minute warning in Tampa, where the Bucks have fought from behind to lead the Super Bowl champion Ravens 16 to 7. Ray Lewis featured in our mic'd up at the half segment coming up on the Lexus halftime show and also a bold preview. A lot of big games coming up on ABC next week on the Lexus halftime show. Take a look. I certainly like to hear that hit on Brad Johnson at halftime. Oh boy. Don't want to put any pressure on anybody. Right. But but I think that one might be a good one to play. Yeah, but they're mash editing in that right now. <laughs> I hope they got that in Dolby. <laughs> Have that, got that. What, what is that? That's football. Got yeah. it's that's, football. That, that's, that's what I was thinking. I wasn't thinking go. bad grammar. I was thinking, be a guy. Yeah, you could say boom now. Okay. Yeah. Now I don't say boom. Farman will fly off the couch in his underwear. Hey, that's mine. <laughs> it's third down. After the measurement, third down in inches. The goose. The goose. He looks like he's been drinking some Sam Adams instead of playing <laughs> next to him. Third and inches now at the 41-yard line, and Gerback's going to try to do it himself. It would be only his second rushing first down of the season. The other was a touchdown if he gets it. Well, I'm not so sure about that play selection. Yeah, I'm, under the circumstances, he didn't get a whole lot. Quarterback who's hurt, Matt Cavanaugh calls the plays. Time quarterback himself. And he does get it. So a first down here. They have all of their timeouts with a minute 53. Their back bucked it up in their heart. He despite did. the fact he's been dinged a few times tonight. You watch that Ray Lewis mic'd up. You get the feeling everybody is going to play hard here. First down. From the 41 yard line as Gerback throws. Catches made at midfield at Shannon Sharp. Ravens come up to go without a huddle, conserve their timeouts, ball at the 52nd and one. Tampa Bay will be content to give Gerback that pass to Sharp right down the field where they feel the got a shot at picking off Gerback for the third time. Then that pass for Sharp is not caught at the 44 yard line. Line judge comes right in and says, hit the ground. Third and one with a minute 25 remaining in the half. Sharp is so good at finding the small areas in these zones. He still doesn't look like Gerback has enough on that ball to be able to squeeze it in to even the smallest hole. Gerback is 9 of 21 for 92 yards. Sharp has caught three of those completions. Mo Williams in the game in the backfield. They send Sharp in motion on third down and one. Burbach rolling and throwing, and it is juggled and not caught by Brandon Stokely. Rondé Barber broke up the play. Yeah, Barber had a better shot at picking this one off. If he had a, uh, that Canadian field that's a little bit wider, he might have got it. There they are working right there. Watch Barber break on this ball. Sensational catch, but way out of bounds. So now they are forced to punt down by nine not wanting to give Tampa the ball at the 50 yard line keep an eye on Yoder who will come up through the middle again Richardson this time gets the kick away and Williams lets it bounce and it rolls into the end zone so it's a touchback Tampa will have it with a minute nine remaining in the half and all of their timeouts. Tell you, between Donnie Abraham and Rondé Barger, Barber, the Bucks really have some bollocks out there in the quarters. 
a lot of it's the style of defense that they play Dennis they play so much zone that the corners are looking in at the quarterback and if the timing is off at all they're so quick to be able to break they've done so much study work you can see them talking on the sidelines Lynch and Barber there they're thinking about the next time they get out there and who's going to get the next pick. This is the Bucks' worst starting field position tonight. They begin from the 20 yard line and they begin with Dunn on the ground picking up a couple. It'll be second down eight. Conservative play selection by Clyde Christensen and Tony Dungy but I think they like this nine point lead they have Baltimore's thinking the same way they're going to start burning their time out yeah it's pretty it's, it's a pretty interesting situation here once Baltimore saw that Tampa was going to play it conservatively they figured look we're down by nine we'll use our timeouts because Tampa was clearly in a mode where they were going to run the clock out and Brian Billick said no you're not so it'll be second down and eight Meanwhile, we'll see the Ravens again next Monday night. We're back on Monday to wrap up the season. Vikings Ravens at 9 o'clock Eastern time. ESPN's game tomorrow night from the Superdome Redskins against the Saints. And a lot of people might be wondering what in the world is a team doing on two, in effect, Monday night games in a row, even though this is a, a Saturday edition. Next week is the makeup week in the NFL for the postponed second week following the terrorist attack. So it would have been. Week two's game between Minnesota and Baltimore now becomes the Monday night game next week. This is Warwick Dunn up past the 30, up to the 34 yard line. And there's that quickness that Eric Dickerson talked about why he felt that Warwick Dunn would have a more successful night than Mike Allstott. Now, with that first down, the Buccaneers change plans. They do, they change plans, and now it's the Bucs who figure to call the next time out. And that's caught by Dave Moore, but they won't have to call one. Well, yes, they will. They're going to say he stayed in bounds at the 36, forced out by McAllister, but the clock keeps running. Second and eight. And the Bucks change their plans again. To the consternation of the crowd, do not call a timeout. Yeah, that's that rule where McAllister forced Moore out of bounds going backwards, so they do not give him the timeout when he goes out of bounds. Right. And that will end the first half. I can't believe the crowd is booing. Yeah. I mean, what do they want? They're up by nine against the world champs. Big game. They didn't like that play call, but they lead 16-7. Let's go to the field. Melissa. All right, Al, thanks. Brian, Elvis Gerback, the bruised ribs, the strain groin. How much is that affecting his play, and how much does it concern you? Well, I don't know. Yeah, it always concerns me when players hurt. Right now, the difference is turnovers. We can't turn the ball over, and we'd be in pretty good shape. Defense is playing well enough. We've done some things offensively, but you just can't turn the ball over that way. Brian, thanks. Let's go over to Eric. Coach, your defense has played well in the first half, but your offense has struggled. What change would you make at, at halftime? Well, we have. Uh, they've got a great defense. we got to continue to pick away with the runs and see if we can hit one big play in the second half. Thanks, Coach. Al? All right, thank you, Eric. And a reminder that coming up next will be our Lexus Halftime Show. Ray Lewis is mic'd up. We'll take a look at a bold preview and we will do that when we come back to Tampa after this message from the National Football League and the work mark ABC stations. And back we come to Tampa. Al Michaels, Dan Fouts, Dennis Miller, Eric Dickerson and Melissa Stark Saturday night football. No game on Monday night. It's New Year's Eve. But next Monday we go to Baltimore where the Ravens take on Minnesota in a game they hope they don't have to win to get into the playoffs. Back to receive is Aaron Stecker and Danny Kite to kick off again the Bucks. Never a kickoff return for a touchdown in the history of the franchise and it won't happen here either. Yeah, the Ravens only trail by nine points, but it could be a whole lot worse. That first half was a disaster. Elvis Gerback with an interception here to Rondé Barber. That was his 17th of the year. Then Todd Yoder comes in clean on Kyle Richardson. That led to a field goal. Then this interception by Derek Brooks. That led to Brad Johnson's one-yard quarterback sneak. But the Buccaneers had great field position. They should have more points than 16. Two turnovers, blocked punt, ball at the 20-yard line. 
Johnson throws, catch made, all stop. He gets banged out of bounds by Corey Harris after a gain of five. And when you take a look at the first half stats, you got to keep in mind that five of Tampa Bay's seven drives started in Baltimore territory. So you can see they don't have a whole lot of yards, but the Ravens in control there, but not on the scoreboard. Brad Johnson, just seven yards per completion, and not a whole lot of production out of Dunn or Keyshawn Johnson. First down, Brad Johnson leads him up at the 26 yard line. Dunn on second down gets hit by Jamie Sharper and let's check in with Eric well I spoke to Tony Dungy at halftime he said that they have to take advantage of the turnovers that they had in the first half he said they cannot score three points we need to get touchdowns he also said that they want to get Warwick Dunn more involved in the three wide sets to get more pressure on their defense well he starts with a pass to Allstott, a run by Dunn, third down and seven now at the 23-yard line out of the shotgun. Blitz, Johnson whacked as he throws, and it's incomplete. It was Corey Harris sneaking in, safety blitz. Really a well-designed blitz, Al, as Ray Lewis lined up on the outside, and Corey Harris basically took the position of middle linebacker in place of Lewis and came right up the middle. Here is Harris right here. Out from the outside comes Ray Lewis. But watch Harris get in there just an instant late, but that caused that Aaron throw by Brad Johnson. Talked about the four Buccaneers who went to Vanderbilt. Harris is the one Raven who is the next Commodore. Three and out on Tampa's first possession as Mark Royal sends a low liner that bounces at the 40, fielded on two hops by Jermaine Lewis, and he brings it back up to the 42 yard line. You know, Vanderbilt's team doesn't have that many Vanderbilt players. On it. <laughs> Here comes Gerback. Baltimore down by nine. Ray Lewis. You can always count on Ray for mic'd up at the half, can't you? Yeah, how's that how's pizza? That pizza? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, boys. Freddie Short counted me there. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm just finishing dinner, no problem. <laughs> First down at the 42-yard line as Burbank throws, and that's incomplete. Travis Taylor, the intended receiver, Rondé Barber covering. Here's Melissa. Well, Al, in Brian Billick's words, Elvis Gerback is fine. Yes, he's banged up, but everybody's banged up this time of year. He is not hurt enough to take him out of the game. Billick's main message at halftime, eliminate the mistakes. He said, we're approaching tonight like it's a playoff game, and you don't win in the playoffs with the penalties and the turnovers. That's so what Dr. Nick said about Elvis all the time. He's fine. Second down. No game. Third down and ten. Now we highlighted or lowlighted Elvis's troubles in the first half. You can see that uh, well below 500 with the two interceptions. That's what Brian Billick was talking about. We just can't have the turnovers in a defensive battle such as we have tonight. Third and ten at the 42 yard line. Pressure on Gerback. Down he goes. It was Dexter Jackson on the safety blitz and Steve White, 34 and 94. Brian Billick may be saying that Elvis is okay, but the Buccaneers are going to make sure he's not. They've thrown two passes or tried to get off two passes here in the second half, and the both times the Buccaneers came with a blitz. This time, Dexter Jackson, 34, comes clean. On the first down play, John Lynch came with pressure, so the Buccaneers are going to come after Elvis. Now Richardson. Short, angled kick, but it takes a good Baltimore bounce. A flag goes down. The flag is thrown back in the area where Richardson punted. Well, and you wonder if it might not be holding against Joe Maesi up front again, or perhaps another of the punt block protectors there. Would have been a 50-yard kick. Offense, number 30, 10-yard penalty. Repeat the down, fourth down. So instead of a 50-yard kick and he got a very fortuitous bounce, you have a hold on Ian Badejo. And they're going to have to punt again. So Ian Badejo, number 30, here he is on the wing here. 
as John Howell jumps to the inside and that's just a clean tackle. Well Joe Marciano special teams coach of the Buccaneers really has something on the Ravens punt team. Blocked one constant pressure two holding penalties against the Ravens trying to protect Kyle Richardson. I have a Deja keeps tackling like that going to send him down to cover the punt. <laughs> well Marciano working so hard this week he didn't have time to shave. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Richardson line drive kick we have another flag and you have Williams running it back into Baltimore territory to the 46 yard line but hand tack throws another flag and get Robbie Abdullah for roughing the punter yeah. question is this one might be 15 and first down for Baltimore personal foul rubbing the kicker number 27 15 yards first down oh boy and that was fourth down and 25. Talk about a mental mistake by Abdullah. You've got no business getting anywhere near this punt at fourth and 25. Boy, Richardson lucky didn't blow out his knee, too. Abdullah's number 27. He's just got to realize that he's got no shot at blocking that one. Just let him kick it. So an automatic first down on the 15 yard variety running into the kicker a five yard variety is not an automatic first down and that's the Bucks first penalty of the game could have come at a worse time for him because it gives Baltimore new life as they try to climb back into it at the 41 yard line on first and 10 and it's a four yard gain as it couldn't have come at a worse time a worse time than fourth and twenty five. Well, it's almost like a turnover it's sure. as if Williams ran the ball back and fumbled and gave the ball right back to uh, the Ravens. Yeah but with Richardson's propensity for having him blocked I've seen worse roughing the kickers than that. I mean I know he took him on the knee but it wasn't like he ran into him stupidly he just took a dive and came down around. Now he's got to realize when you got a clean shot at making a block and also when it's fourth and twenty five. Second and six from the 45 yard line. Allen hit first by Jamie Duncan. Gain a one. Third and five. Gain of one. Durback, last year at Kansas City, originally drafted by the 49ers, has a Super Bowl ring. He backed up Steve Young when the Niners won it all in 94, beating San Diego in the Super Bowl. Tony Dungy. He didn't figure that Brad would be available because he thought Brad was going to Baltimore. The next thing you know, Johnson indicates interest in Tampa Bay, and here he is, and Sean King is on the bench. Third down and four from the 46. And Gerback gets sacked. And that is Steve White. And Steve White is only playing this much because Marcus Jones was hurt early in the game. He will not return. And White doing a masterful job filling in. Right, he's got more sacks than Marcus Jones in a fill-in role. Here he is, 94, getting around Kip Vickers. But the problem with the pass protection there is that Warren Sapp is so wide, he's out in the gap between the tackle and the guard. So Vickers has to take a shot at him. And that allowed White to get around the corner. So now Richardson to kick again. You know his leg is warm. This is his third punt in the last couple of minutes. Wobbly, short. Takes a Baltimore bounce, fielded by Williams at the 20. And Williams gets knocked out of bounds at the 50-yard line. See, there's your vigorish for going after Richardson. He's a little flinchy now. No question. <laughs> He's no got question. another guy rolling on his feet there. He's got the yips. Tampa has it near midfield. Only on ABC. Dick Clark was at the first New Year's Eve. <laughs> oh, Dick Clark's rocking second year's Eve. <laughs> first down. This is Warwick Dunn picking up three. Well, we had Ray Lewis mic'd up at the half. Here's an outtake with him talking about defending. Keyshawn Johnson. Hey, hey, I'm gonna press his ass. He ain't gonna outrun you. Okay. All right? Tell Chris and the Wayne just to get their hands on Keyshawn. Game over. That's all you gotta tell him. You ain't gotta coach him. Tell him just to get their hands on him. Game over. I'm telling you now. Flow, flow, flow. Second down and six. 
six as Johnson throws. Here's Dunn out in the flat, seeking the first down and getting it. And what Ray Lewis is talking about is he was challenging Chris McAllister to come up on the line of scrimmage, press Keyshawn off the line of scrimmage. Don't worry about Keyshawn running behind him. Then he goes to the veteran 15 year vet Rod Woodson and tells him to tell McAllister and Dwayne Starks on the other side that if you take Keyshawn out of the game we win this game. More importantly are we allowed to say ass. No. OK. First and 10 to the 39 yard line. Johnson going deep for Johnson. Incomplete. And a good, McAllister. a good example that Keyshawn will not outrun Chris McAllister. Especially if McAllister plays him deep. Look how deep he is. Ten yards from Johnson at the snap of the ball. Johnson's a long strider, not much of a fake there. McAllister reading that ball and makes the play on it. And then as he comes back to the huddle, points to Ray Lewis and says, I got you, man. Was, was not Lewis's admonition to press him? Or did I hear that wrong? Absolutely. But he also said, don't worry, he can't outrun you. Okay. So in that play, McAllister backed off because that was the defense that was called. Ray would like to see him up on the line of scrimmage, but can't argue with the results on that one. Larry Webster, the defensive tackle, seeing a little bit more action tonight because of uh, Suragusa's health. Sam Adams also a uh, had been hurt and he's worked his way back into the lineup and now they're going to lose Webster and McCrary a big loss huh? right McCrary gone of course a pro bowler and you talked at the very top about the loss earlier this season of Leon Searcy loss of Jamal Lewis so Billy trying to keep everything together and get him hot going into the playoffs second down and ten as all stop his way and that's quintessential all start to the 34 yard line when it looks like he has nothing the next thing you know picks up about four and a lot of it is just pure desire but it's also smart running as he jumps to the outside here watch the quick feet now watch how he lowers his pad level watch how low he gets to the ground here as he heads north <laughs> I'm not sure if that's north or not but in football terms this is running north you go West a little bit, then you make that right turn, lower your head, and get down the field. He gets a blow, empty backfield here, empty set. Third down and five. Quick flip, but stop is Jack Wes Green, who does not get the first down. Needed five, got about three and a half. Tackle by McAllister. That pep talk by Ray Lewis really got to Chris McAllister. This is an outstanding job of closing after the reception by McAllister. Watch him looking in at the quarterback. He's got five yards he's got to close when that ball is in the air. He does it and keeps the Buccaneers from picking up the first down. Yeah, that first down marker, get to it, truism holds especially true against the Baltimore Ravens because you're not going to run through many tackles on these guys. It might be the best tackling team in the world. Now Brian is a perfect night. This will be a 48 yard field goal attempt. His old holder from New Orleans Mark Royals is spotted for him. And as a whistle there's no play. The whistle before the play for delay of game. Delay offense. Punt team. Yeah. Punt go, team get you, out there. You go from 48 to 53. Well Royals can stay out there on the punt team he was the holder on the field goal team and now the punter on the punt team. There's the play clock runs down to zero ball snap. The real heartbreaker is that this ball was short. <laughs> Heartbreaker for Brian. Yeah. <laughs> well, if he was short from 48, why not try it from 53? <laughs> I, tell you, I, I wonder about his stamina. He's had a workout tonight. <laughs> Mark Royals halfway through the third quarter. Little pooch. Taken at the six yard line. Good coverage. Getting down there was Dwight Smith. To down it at the six yard line. Say pooch again, please. Pooch! <laughs> Yellow poochy pup. Beautiful. Come off 
the dolls. You are? Yeah, I'm off. First and ten from the six yard line. Gerback throws. And a big 16 yard pickup to Todd Heap up to the 22 yard line to begin this drive. Denny, why are you off the dolls? You know what? I've rethought my position. Isn't it? I don't know what I was thinking, Al. I haven't been feeling myself today. I'm a little off my feet. I love the dogs. Where do we get to the playoffs and the Eagle dog comes back? <laughs> well, the Eagle dog creeps me a little. I had to put out a restraining order on the Eagle dog. 30 feet, he sees time. First and 10 from the 22-yard line. Allen picks up three. Well, Warren Sapp, he does not have a full sack this season at home, amazingly enough. Take a look at last year's sack leaders. Glover of New Orleans at 17, Warren at 16 and a half. So did Trace Armstrong, then a Dolphin and New Douglas at 15. How are those guys doing this season? Not as well, as you can see. And then Green and Taylor are the only guys with 15 plus sacks in each of two consecutive years. Hand back throwing a flag on Kip Vickers. False start. False start. Offense number 77. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Remember Warren Sapp trying to ignite a fire. Said that he was going to break the sack record this year. Seven home games, a half sack. The amazing thing about uh, his year last year and Leroy Glover's of the Saints last year, they're inside tackles. That's a, a phenomenal number. Where he's at now and where it'll be at the end of the year. A lot of double teams. Too many to overcome. Second and 11. Out of the flat. That's Mo Williams making the catch. Doesn't go anywhere. Jamie Duncan hit him first. Rondé Barber finished him off. We're seeing how important and critical penalties are in a defensive battle. The penalty by Vickers. Took away the little bit of momentum that Gerback and the Ravens got when Gerback hit Todd Heap over the middle to get off the uh, their own goal line. Third and 11. And that catch is made, but not for a first down as Travis Taylor, who scored the Baltimore touchdown in the second quarter, comes up two yards shy. Donnie Abraham denies him the first down. Wonder if we're seeing uh, Travis Taylor move past Kadre Ismail on the third down float chart because Ismail's got 23 third down receptions this year. Ismail, by the way, doesn't have a catch tonight. Uh, Taylor had a pro push off in that first half. The kid give him style points. Got away with it. Here's Richardson to punt. Flag is thrown. And this is Williams to the 48 yard line. Might be a hold on Maisi again. Yeah, Schroeder got in there. Yes, he did, Al. Unbelievable how one man can, on special teams, affect the game. Well, all week both long. Teams. Yeah, all week long, everybody's been anticipating the Yoder Maisi's matchup. Well, Maisi's 241 pounds working against Todd Yoder. Holding. Offense, number 59. They got to give him some help. First down, first down. First down. Sure do. Penalty decline. Tampa has it at its own 48. Martin Gramatica pulled hamstring last week. He actually practiced yesterday. Even though they brought uh, Doug Bryan in to kick. Well, it might be sympathetic pain from his brother Billy's injury the previous, uh, well, a few weeks ago, I guess it is now. Say what you will about the Gramaticas, but they celebrate like no one. Unlike F. Scott and Zelda, they don't come home till March. <laughs> Bill Gramatic of the Arizona Cardinals with that ill-fated celebration against the Giants. And Warwick Dunn has room to roam and picks up a first down. 17-yard game. Well, the Gramatic is obviously great kickers. They're clutch guys, but uh, they also overact a little, like our friend Roberto. First down to the bay. <laughs> you can see they have some of the similar moves out. 
And there's where Benini hurt his knee, jumping up like that. And uh, <laughs> they're a little delicate this year, the Gramaticas. They kind of like make Garo Uprebium look like Vasily Alexia. <laughs> Here's Allstock. And he picks up close to 10. Tackled by Brad Jackson. How would you like to be Billy Gramatica living in your brother's shadow when he's like 5'3"? <laughs> it's a tight fit. Now the Buccaneers are finding something on the left side as Allstott cuts all the way away from Jamie Sharper. Back-to-back -back runs. First it's Warwick Dunn, and then it's Allstott as Peter Bulwer takes himself out of the play. Nice block by Cook. Jamil Cook. Helping to pave the way. Here's Allstock. Wow. Picks up four. Remember, Peter Bulwer is a linebacker. Weighs 255 pounds or so, but he's been forced to play a lot of defensive end. You know, if most fullbacks run downhill, Allstock's like that guy from the ski jump at the beginning of Wide World of Sports. He really comes downhill. Vinko Bogataj, I believe, was his name. Of course. I, I didn't even try for it. I knew it was common. I'm just home. trying to remember it. He didn't have a name and number on his back. Uh -uh. Gain of one for all stuff. Well, guys, you've got the Ravens here tonight trying to secure a playoff for it. The, you know, the Raiders look like they're leaking a little bit of oil after last week. Pittsburgh stays red hot, though. It's amazing how Tony Dungy seems to always get his team to play well in December. They were sure. stumbling around all year. They said, oh, that's okay. We'll be all right come December. And sure. Here they are. You're right. Both teams, as we said at the top, Dun Dungy with a great record in December. Billick's had a great record in December. Third down and six at the 22-yard line as Johnson throws, and that one is thrown away. Johnson intended for Jack Wes Green. But you know what? I mean, it's looking more and more like those who doubt your Steelers, Denny, yeah. are wrong. Well, Pittsburgh might be this year's Baltimore, Al. You might not realize how good they are until you see them hoisting the uh, Lombardi trophy. And when we were talking to Billick, he flat out said his MVP this year is none other than Cordell Stewart. You get a lot of votes. How about a crazy time for a fake field goal? Well, Mark Royals is the holder. This is a 40-yard attempt for Brian. This time is no good. That looks like a tired leg, too. That ball just started out right and never hooked back into the middle. And that means Baltimore is going to get it at the 30 when we come back. Taking off the. Once again, we echo those sentiments. See Bushy out at Crawford. See beautiful. Saying that uh, Osama Bin Laden used to run a country, now he yep. runs a cage. It's beautiful, you're, <laughs> you're right. I love the Bushman. Bushy? Yep. Bushman? I love the Bushman. We're coming <laughs> yeah. to Baltimore next year, Prez. If you're sitting out there in Crawford with Tommy the Generals in his feety jammies and beret, come in and join us in the booth. Come on in. Come on in at halftime. Sir, we're open again for business. From the 30 yard line, here's Gerbach. Up to the 30. Two-yard line. Bucks say no catch. Officials said yes, he did. Ravens, a minute 20 to go in the third, and down by nine, and on second and long, it's Ismael who is able to make the catch, his first grab of the night, and out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Dexter Jackson, 25-yard pickup. Jackson made the back. Buccaneers might want to take a look at this one to see if Ismael got both feet in. He really took a shot here from Dexter Jackson. Right foot down, left foot down. Great play by, Ra uh, by Raheem Ismail. Cadre, rather. Puts him over 1,000 yards for the season. 70 catches now. His first of the game right there. Burback steps up, fires into traffic, and guns it into Travis Taylor at the 24-yard line. Whizzed it by Brooks, who had an earlier pick. You know, it's funny, that's the first we see a cadre this night, but there's also another forgotten man on this offense. Where's Brandon Stokely from last year? We haven't seen him at all. Have they've, we? Only, they've only thrown him to him once. Elvis getting into rhythm here, even with the bad leg. 
Two fine throws in a row. Perfect spiral. First down, 24-yard line. Big drive for the Ravens, trying to climb back in, and Allen breaks one inside the 10, all the way down to the two-yard line. Finally tackled by Brian Kelly, and so the Ravens come to life at the end of the third, and they will begin the fourth with a first and goal. And that is the end of the third quarter. With the score, Tampa Bay 16, Baltimore 7, and ABC's Holiday Bash from Tampa returns after this for our ABC station. Tampa Bay 16, Baltimore 7. The NFL regular season. And the fourth quarter begins. Baltimore with a first and goal, and Terry Allen can only pick up a half yard or so. Ball coming loose, but well after the play, and then Allen gets into it. But Nate Webster's on me. You know, Brian Billick said that they're, they're more explosive this year than they were last year. Finally, we're seeing that explosiveness prior to that play. The Ravens went 65 yards in just three plays to get to the second down and goal. Monty Kiffin, the defensive coordinator. His unit trying to limit Baltimore to a field goal attempt. It's second down and goal from the two. And here's Allen. He gets to the one-yard line. And that's all. Third and goal coming up. Derek Brooks is going to uh, read this play and fill the hole. Watch number 55 here. Reads the lead block of Sam Cash. Defeats it, loses his helmet. Still sticks his head in there to make the tackle on Terry Allen. That's why the guy's been in the Pro Bowl four times. With a slew of one yard touchdown runs in his career. But he's not even in the game here, and the play is whistled dead before the snap. Ball start, offense, number 64, five yard penalty, still third down. Edwin Mulatalo has taken them from the one yard line to the six yard line. Lucky on that one, Steve White was coming free again. This will allow the Buccaneers to bring their nickel personnel in for the secondary, anticipating a pass from Gerback. Empty set. Gerback. Too high for Todd Heap. Leaping for it. Couldn't possibly have come down in bounds. They'll have to settle for a three-point attempt. It's like the old days when the goalposts were up near the goal line. You had to be conscious of them. Six foot five, Todd Heap needed to be seven foot five to make this one to get down in bounds. Give Nate Webster some credit for forcing the high throw. Matt Stover now, a 24-yard field goal attempt. His first field goal attempt of the night Flint. and it draws Baltimore to within six Bulletamo's <laughs> mistake perhaps costing them a touchdown making it 16 to 10 Tampa Bay ESPN's Sports Center well Melinda Rosser is the chosen woman tonight oh, part of a promotion here since the Bucks have never had a kickoff return for a touchdown if they do it right here. She'll be a million dollars richer. Minus taxes. Taken up at the 22 by Robbie Abdullah on the short kick by Kite to the 34. Let's check in with Melissa. Al, as you mentioned earlier, if the Buccaneers win tonight, it reduces the Giants' chances of making the playoffs. That puts Geraldine Barber in a very difficult position. She is the mother of Rondé, who of course plays here, and Tiki, who plays in New York. She said the first two years in the league their first two years they played against each other and she thought that was the absolute worst but that nothing compares to this today is her birthday and she said that the best present she could hope for is for both of her boys to walk away from their games feeling good about themselves yeah, her boys playing in the two biggest games in the league this weekend first down as Johnson goes back to pass fires too high 
sailed on him and it's incomplete intended for Keyshawn Johnson who has not caught a pass since very early in the second period and they really haven't thrown him a lot of those crossing routes that was a deeper crossing route that uh, Brad Johnson was trying to force into Keyshawn Keyshawn but he's caught so many passes on the shallow drag off the play action but the Ravens with Ray Lewis lurking in the middle have taken that away. Second and ten from the 35 yard line. Done. Picks up three. Talked about Keyshawn and how many catches he has. And this is right up to the moment 105 with three tonight. Jimmy Smith of the Jags with 100, then Rod Smith of Denver would be third. Record 123. Herman Moore of the Lions did it in 1995. Keyshawn would need 19 more, and he only has uh, five quarters in which to accomplish that. And four of those quarters against those great corners of the Eagles. Next week. Don't next, like his chances. Next Sunday night, third down and six. Brad Johnson throws and coming back to make the catch at the 47 was Jack Wes Green. Ray Lewis was blitzing that time. Hit Johnson as he got in the way, but Green was able to adjust on the route, picks up the first. Ray Lewis on a looping blitz from his middle linebacker position there. He's going to come in just a little bit late. You see the stunt right there. He's got the clear lane to the quarterback. Johnson fades in the pocket just enough to be able to throw this ball against man coverage outside to Green. Timing was perfect as McAllister playing way off. At the 47 yard line, 12 minutes left in the first quarter with Tampa up by six and all stop. Banging his way to the 43 yard line, gain of four. Lewis in on that stop. And that last play is a good example of why Marvin Lewis, defensive coordinator, for the Ravens doesn't like to blitz. If you don't get to the quarterback, you expose your corners to man-to-man -man coverage. A veteran quarterback like Brad Johnson has the timing, reads the blitz, and gets the ball to his receiver before they can make a play. All you have to do, though, is hang in there with number 52 yeah. looming in your face. A B-52. <laughs> Second and six from the 43. All stop. Inside the 40. Bangs his way for a first down to the 36 yard line. Well that's the beautiful thing about the uh, Ravens defense. You might have to rate them as one of the best all time and they really don't blitz. They don't need a lot of sacks. Watch the explosion here. Watch how low Alstott comes on Corey Harris and just drives him backwards. But this is the sound of it. Pretty good night for Allstott and Dunn. 49 yards for Allstott, 44 for Dunn. And they're both in the game here. From the 36, they give it to Dunn. Picks up 33, check in with Eric. Well, uh, watching from the field, one thing I like about these Ravens linebackers is their speed. They're able to run like linebackers, and they have great stamina. Now, we're in the fourth quarter, and they're still running like we're in the first quarter. They seem to never get tired, and they also are very good tacklers in open space. You know, Lewis has those beautiful choppy steps. His feet always seem so close to the ground. <laughs> it's tough to get him off his feet. At the 32. Now it's going to be a legal motion against the Buccaneers. Jack has Green was moving at the same time. Two guys in motion, illegal shift. Illegal motion. Illegal motion. Offense. Offense. Two men moving Tim at, the, moving same at time. the same time. Five yard penalty. Five yard penalty. Repeat, the down. Repeat the down. Second down. Second down. It's almost like a penalty just takes uh, all this crowd out of the game. They realize how important every yard is in a battle like this. Especially on a drive like this too because it's a six point game and it at worst want to get Brian in position to make Baltimore have to score twice. And that's what a field goal would do here. Second down and 12. Johnson sets 
up, throws underneath. It's caught by Keyshawn Johnson. Johnson to Johnson for a minimal gain. Tackled there by Lewis and Sharper. Well, I'm not sure the beginning of taking this crowd out of the game doesn't actually go back to the end of the first half when they get so tentative in their play calling towards the end. If you want to activate the crowd, you've got to give them what they're here for. They finally are going to find Keyshawn on one of those shallow crossing routes, but Carnell Lake, he knows it's coming. He took a shot at Keyshawn on his way to the quarterback. Third down, nine. They're outside Brian's range here. And Johnson throws this one incomplete off the hands of the outstretched Jacquez Green, covered by Corey Harris. No flag. Again, that uh, two men in motion penalty is going to hurt the Buccaneers. You talk about Doug Bryan's range. Uh, wonder what it is at this point. Well, you can't take a chance because it would be a 53-yarder, which meant if you missed it, Baltimore would get the ball at its own 43. So you're compelled to pooch it. Unless you want to bring Lynch in for the long kick. <laughs> field position at this point. Royals angles it. Oh, beautifully. Uh, covered by Dwight Smith. That's the second time tonight he's made a big time play inside the five yard line. You asked for it, you got it, Dano. That's a pooch and a half. That is a kennel club. During the break, Warren Sapp really got the crowd going, serving as the cheerleader. And the crowd has responded. Baltimore is pinned deep at their own two-yard line. Down by six with 8.35 left in the fourth quarter. And they begin with a Terry Allen four-yard burst. Lost the ball, but after the whistle. Coming up on ABC, the NHL is back next Saturday, 3 Eastern, noon Pacific. Colorado and Detroit. The Rangers in Pittsburgh, Capitals and Bruins. Regional coverage of the National Hockey League next Saturday right here on ABC. Ten years Eddie Jockman have it. Eddie? Yeah. He may be making a comeback. <laughs> and Gump Worsley, too. Second down and six. Gerbach, six out of eight in this half. And a little mistiming on the handoff to Terry Allen, and that doesn't go anywhere. It's third down and six. And coming off the goal line, the Ravens are choosing to go right at the heart of that Buccaneer defense, right up the middle against Sapp and McFarland. This is where the crowd really can help the Buccaneer defense. The Ravens do not use a silent count. Difficult to even get the play called in the huddle right here with the fans right behind the Raven huddle. Third and six from the six. Gerbach to the outside. Caught. Good catch. Travis Taylor moves the change. Covered by Donnie Abraham. First down at the 15. Dennis, just like you said, the focus seems to be moving away from Cadre Ismail on third down. A couple of times now tonight that Elvis has found number 89, Travis Taylor. And again, the timing is impeccable before Taylor is even turned around. The ball's on the way and right in front of his eyes for the easy catch. Four catches for Taylor tonight. 51 yards and a touchdown. Under seven to go from the 15 on first down. Gerback buying time. And gets taken down by Quarles just shy of the first down. Second and one. Talk about a tall order coming off your goal line, having to drive the length of the field and get a touchdown. That is what faces Elvis Gerback and these Ravens. At worst, at least to get it in a position where if they have to punt and then they hold Tampa, they should get the ball back following the punt in decent position. Second down and one at the 24-yard line. And moving through the middle this time is Mo Williams across the 25, and that's a first down. So from their two, they've gotten it out to the 26-yard line. Mo Williams was running behind big fullback, number 32, Sam Gash. Check him out right behind Gerback there. Here he comes, meeting that Jamie Duncan. 
And watch Williams just get inside to pick up that first down. Stick it on the ground again. There's a flag coming in from the umpire. And that's Mo Williams on a play that figures to go back. 99% of the time when the ump throws the flag, that's the call. It might be Edwin Mulatalo with the holding on Anthony McFarland. Holding. Holding. Offense. Offense. Ten, yards Ten yards from the previous back. Repeat, Repeat the down. First down. First down. Carl Madsen is our umpire. Let's take a look from the bill of his cap with the umpire cam. Here's Mulatalo right here, number 64. There's McFarland. I've seen a lot worse holding than that. Looks like McFarland took himself out of the play. First and 20. Up at the 16 yard line. Williams. On an interesting call. Thought they might uh, be able to catch him with a trap play up in inside, but these tackles so mobile so quick at getting off blocks and then they're backed up by Derek Brooks That's why this Buccaneer defense is so good Simeon Rice has added a little to his game this year he's not just an edge rusher anymore he had to come in and learn the Buccaneer way he plays the run better this year second down 18 from the 18 yard line they're back under pressure down he goes Anthony McFarland and Warren Sapp. Booger picking it up. Well, when you got athletes that are so big and so quick as these two, 92 McFarland and 99 Sapp, McFarland gets there first and Sapp cleans them up. Again, a penalty destroys any momentum the Ravens might have and gives it right back to the red shirts. Third down and 25 now at the 11 yard line. And on the ground to Williams up to the 20 yard line. And I guess at this point all you're hoping for is is to punt. Yeah, that's a it's, an, it's a very odd call. Well, I don't know what you're thinking at this point. Yeah, you're thinking field position. But you're really hoping to give your center, your snapper, Joe Maesi, number 59, some help against Todd Yoder. This is the battle within the battle all night long, right in the middle. Here's Richardson now on fourth down from the 20-yard line. This time the blocking up front is good, but the kick is not particularly good, and in fact takes a Tampa bounce, and it will be ruled down near midfield. God, it is bizarre to watch a former offensive madman like Billy heads his bet like that. That's why I'm a little confused. I was trying to figure out a reasoning, the reasoning behind it. And I guess we'll all have to mull it over. Get the Ouija. First and ten, ten. Well, the Ravens now, what they need is a, a stoppage here. Three and out for Tampa. They have the ball at the 49. Baltimore is all of its time now. It's close to two-minute warning. And here's Warwick Dunn going nowhere. Now, do the Ravens want to start taking their timeouts here or wait? Yeah, they do. They take it here. First one. Two left. Timeout Baltimore. Very good. All right. Monday Night Football is on Saturday night, but New Year's Eve is on New Year's Eve. There are the running backs tonight. Warwick Dunn averaging 3-6, all stop 4-1. Nothing spectacular, but very effective. Second down and 10 as Johnson throws, and that's incomplete. And Baltimore says, thank you for the favor. He said, nothing else, that stops the clock without Baltimore having to spend a timeout. Well, exactly. Uh, you would think that Tony Dungy would have just liked to have run the ball three times. Force the Ravens to use all three of their timeouts, then have Mark Royals come in, pooch a nice punt down there where Dwight Smith can pin it inside the five yard line. Yeah. But that call there, where Johnson had nobody to go to and then had to throw it away, kills the clock, saves the Ravens a timeout. It creates a third and ten in a passing situation as Johnson works from the gun. Fred under pressure going deep for Keyshawn but too deep so 
Keyshawn couldn't make the play. Brad goes down, and that's about as good a series as the Baltimore defense could hope for. They were prepared to use all of their timeouts, only had to use one. Well, sporadically throughout the night, the crowd has been booing Dungy for running when they wanted him to pass. Now it seems to have inverted to the point where they're booing him because they wanted him to run, and he was passing. Here's Royals kick after the Bucks take only 25 seconds off the clock. And this is Jermaine Lewis, and he can't go anywhere. Good special teams coverage by the Tampa Bay Bucks, led by 38, John Howell. So now the Ravens, with two timeouts, plus the two-minute warning, have to go close to 90 yards with 2.56 on the clock. Moments ago, that's Warren Sapp as the defense came out onto the field. Well, Saragusa might have did the hit disco hand gestures in the opening, but it's Warren's time here. Crowd into it. First down from the 12-yard line as Gerback throws. Caught underneath by Ismail, loses his footing, gets up to the 19. Ravens will go without a huddle. They can stop the clock three times. They have two timeouts plus the two-minute warning. And they got to start looking for Shannon Sharp working over the middle. Sharp lining up on the right side. And they look for him, and he makes the catch. They find him up at the 26-yard line. That's a first down, tackled by Brooks. Important to get this play off before the two-minute warning. Shouldn't be any problem for Gerback as he's at the line calling the play. First and 10 at the 26-yard line. Elvis fires deep, and it's incomplete. Bracket on the play was Taylor underneath the edge, Sharp. It's second and ten. But that's a good decision by Gerback because throwing the ball down that sideline will help Sharp get open over the middle. John Lynch has got to be able to take care of both guys on that too deep zone of the Buccaneers. He's looking at Sharp first, and then he has to realize that Taylor is speeding down the sidelines. Now it looks like they'll work the other side of the field because they have more room. He has Taylor. Wide left, Stokely in the slot. Ismail at the bottom. And Gerbach throws to the outside, and this time it is Sharp going the other way, working the sideline, 31-yard line, 204 left in regulation. It's third down and five. Four game-winning drives for Elvis in the fourth quarter or overtime, second only to Brad Johnson with five. And I really love that play selection because it got Sharp out of bounds and stopped the clock. Now with a first down here, they'll get a clock stoppage with the two-minute warning. And this is a big conversion right here on third down. Third down and five from the 31-yard line. Buck showing blitz. Here they come, and Elvis is in the grasp and a run down by Dexter Jackson. And that's a mistake by Elvis not reading the weak safety blitz and throwing to his hot receiver on the outside. Elvis wanted a timeout, didn't need it. It's a two-minute warning, but fourth and long when we come back. Well, it comes down to this for Baltimore. It's going to be fourth down and ten. Tampa with a win, all but technically clinching the playoff spot. Baltimore, chances are they're going to wind up in the playoffs, but they're not going to go on with a head of steam. No, they're not. They do not look like defending Super Bowl champions last couple of weeks and tonight clearly being outplayed on the defensive side of the ball where the Ravens pretend or expect to be the dominant team. Well, out of the two teams, the one that needs the head of steam less, I would think, is Baltimore because they've been there and won it. I'm not saying they can turn it on whenever they want. I think Tampa Bay really needs to win out if they want to have the mindset that they can actually win the Super Bowl this year and not just make a representative showing in the playoffs. Well, they're going to take a big step to it here if they hold Baltimore on this play. Fourth down and 10 from the 26-yard line. Burback throwing. Derek Brooks made the stop and 
Go figure that one. Well, you got to give it to the Buccaneer defense. They come with pressure. The previous play where Dexter Jackson picks up his second sack on a weak safety blitz, and now they drop back into zone. They dare Gerback to squeeze it in. He decides to go to the short man and hopefully have Ismail make this catch and outrun Derek Brooks for the first down. But the throw is behind Ismail. He has to make a tough catch, and then he has to defeat one of the best linebackers in the game in pass coverage. <laughs> the cheerleader. Huh? It's a little Andre Agassi move to all four corners. Well, they can't run the entire clock out because Baltimore has two timeouts. The ball is at the 31-yard line. They play it conservatively. Allstein has tackled their timeout. Baltimore. Ray Lewis makes the hit. Take a look at this. Then we, we bring this to you almost every time we do the Buccaneers. No team that has lost to the Buccaneers in the course of the regular season has ever won the Super Bowl that season. The Buccaneers, by the way, this season have defeated the Rams, the Packers, and now on the verge of beating the Ravens. So the Bucs have no kickoff returns in their history. Correct. No team that has ever lost to them has won the Super Bowl. Correct. They're in like statistical Rod Serling land here. They are. It's, a, it's like and an that, anomaly black hole. And that's because there's a, almost a full moon tonight. The moon is, what is it, when it's just before a full moon, it's waxing. Then tomorrow night's the full moon. Then you have a waning moon. And then Keith Jackson will do the Rose Bowl under a possum hunt moon. I waxed a little Thursday earlier. Night. Second down and 11 from the 33-yard line. All stop. And this will write a finish to the ball game. Touchdown. have those good seats right under the cannon. Dungey wants to call timeout to talk about going for two to increase this lead to 14. And give us the 34 points we talked about earlier, Denny, when I said points would be in a premium. You talked about. I was querying you. You were nodding. 22 to 10, Tampa Bay, as Mike Allstott in a situation where they're just trying to run the clock out. And Baltimore's just pressing the line of scrimmage, trying to force a turnover. When there's 11 men up on the line of scrimmage, once Allstott gets into the secondary, he can pick on a defensive back to run over for a touchdown. Allstott was looking for somebody to hit. Well, he <laughs> saw that goal line there, and he knew if he didn't go north and south, he probably wasn't going to get in. 80 yards for Allstott tonight, 47 for Dunn, and all of a sudden, Baltimore, in the last three weeks, becoming very vulnerable to the run. Had trouble the last two weeks against Pittsburgh and Cincinnati, and now tonight against Tampa Bay. Going for a deuce, they empty the backfield, put Dunn in the slot. Johnson, under pressure, and he gets sacked. And that's the end of the play, Burnett and Bullwear combined to knock him down. Short of not making it, probably the last thing you want on the two-point is to get your quarterback hit. Ain't that true. A lot of success for the Buccaneers running to the left side tonight behind Kenyatta Walker, number 69, and Cozy Coleman out in front, pulling guard at 322 pounds, leading the way for Mike Allstott. Well, Sapp's been known to take this team on his back periodically. Right. Take a literal sense tonight. Well, Joe Hamilton's a good guy to have to carry. He's only 5'10 and about a buck 80. He's his designated master blaster. Get the small guy to jump off. Number 99 and number one. That's 100%. <laughs> ESPN.com. Annotated Dennis Miller every Tuesday morning. Fauci and I, we're at dingdongstool.com. <laughs> Fauci? <laughs> well. Albino. Ah, I, I finally got it. <laughs> <laughs> Fauci. 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 F
finally came to me. <laughs> Beautiful. Come, you don't give me dendu anymore, though. What's the umlaut? It's my late Christmas gift All to right. you, baby. Show me that dendu bone song. <laughs> you don't call me dendu <laughs> anymore. I will. <laughs> In about 20 minutes, big boy. <laughs> Dendun. <laughs> Bouncing ball off the leg of Brian is taken up at the 25 yard line. And that's one of the big linemen, Orlando Bobo, who takes it to the 37 and then loses the ball. Bobo had a boo boo. Yes, he did. <laughs> Hickey fumbled. And he, did. he sure did. Cover up, big fella. Oh. He's got oh. gloves on and everything. No way he can handle that ball. Look at those gloves. So now Tampa Bay ready to run the clock out at the 36 yard line. The Bucks with a win, all but technically, as we say, clinching a playoff spot. They can start printing tickets. Hey, Bino, they crunched their nemesis, New Orleans. Well, the Ravens would still clinch if Seattle loses to San Diego tomorrow. But you, you, you will have scenarios developing as you take a look at our credits with Howard Katz and Bob Toms leading the way from New York. Steve Hurd, our director of information, and Fred Gadelli and Drew Essikoff at the controls here. But... You could conceivably have a scenario where Baltimore would have to beat Minnesota in the Monday night game next week to clinch his playoff spot, but there are other ways they can get in between now and then. I'm starting to like Tampa's chances more and more, though. Like I was saying, crunch your nemesis, New Orleans, take out the previous world champion. If they can get by Philly next week, they go in with a lot of mo into the playoffs. Second down and 11. One thing about it, you know, that the Jets are still involved trying to clinch a spot. Miami is still trying to clinch a spot. But if it came down to, let's say, Seattle and Baltimore, Seattle would actually win the tie break. A lot of scenarios. But right now, all Tampa knows is they can start pl printing playoff tickets. And Baltimore will leave here with a mark of nine and six. I guess New Orleans isn't really their nemesis, but they both needed that game is what I'm saying. They, they came up big last week and once again this week. Well, Brian Billick was telling us last night, you know, we normally win the games we have to win, but we didn't against Pittsburgh. And as he exhales there on his way off the field, they didn't tonight against Tampa Bay. Bucks won it 22 to 10. Back to wrapping up. Tampa wins it 22 to 10 as we go to the field. Here's Melissa. All right, Al. Well, Tony Dungy said that this game would come down to whichever team had the most emotion. Mike, what was said during the pregame warm-ups to get you guys so fired up? Uh, there was a, really wasn't anything said. Uh, he just said there's been enough said. Uh, we've been fighting all year to get in this position. We're in the driver's seat. Let's go do it for 60 minutes. There's been so much talk this year about his job being on the line. Now he's 13 and one at home in December. You've all but mathematically clinched a playoff spot. Is it time for those people to shut their mouths? Of course. And uh, this team is never considered. Uh, Coach Dungeon's our leader. He's the guy we want to play for, and he's the guy that's going to be here for a long time. And uh, I don't know why we make it so harder on ourselves, but uh, this team has a lot of pride and a lot of character, and it's just fun to play for. Mike, congratulations. Thank you. Let's go over to Eric. Thanks, Melissa. <laughs> Warren, all but technically, you're in the playoffs. What would it mean for this team to make the playoffs after such a slow start? Well, I tell you what, it's going to be a different from us in 2000 when we went to Green Bay and missed that kick and then went into the playoffs a little flat. This team getting the playoffs, we expect to do some damage because every team up there we can play with, and that's what we're looking forward to getting into. Now, you hit Elvis Gerd back tonight. You put a lot of pressure on it. Why was the defense so successful? Well, it was a combination that we thought we had good matchups inside with me and Mack, and we felt like we could dominate them and get it in 2-3 and, you know, moving around, and Simeon's always going to bring his game, and Steve White did an excellent job for us, too, but it was all four of us, and that's what we needed to do was the Mongols to come to work. Congratulations. Thank you.